Alright, what is up guys? Back with episode number 4 of Imperialism. As you can see, we've had quite a number of changes. Wyoming up here is getting big. Utah Tech is very big. Campbell and even some other teams. We're going to go to the wheel and see who is up first. Going east is Gonzaga, and they're going to play Washington. They get the one-point win, barely squeaking it out over the Huskies, and they're going to take a pretty big chunk of land out there in Washington. Next, we have Central Connecticut State up on the wheel. They're going southwest. They're going to take on Fordham. Also, I'm trying a new strategy in this video. Fordham wins, by the way. I'm overlaying the audio, so let me know how this works and if you like it better down in the comments. So Fordham takes that piece of land, Mississippi Valley State up next, going southeast to take on Alcorn State, which they do lose to by 12, and Alcorn takes a big, pretty big chunk of Mississippi right there in the process. Illinois up now going northwest. They're going to take on Illinois State. And Illinois is going to take the victory over Illinois State by just one point, though. A very close game. There's a lot of orange in Illinois now. Wofford up next on the wheel, going southwest. Take on the Furman Paladins, an NCAA tournament team. Furman's going to win by four, though, and take all of the Terriers' land. Not a whole, not a huge piece, but... It's more than enough for Furman. Toledo up next to the wheel. Another tournament team going east, but they really can't. They to spin again. They're going southwest. Take on Wright State, and they win by five. A lot of blue in that area, in that Ohio area. And let's see who's going to get spun next on the wheel. It's going to be Moorhead State going southwest. That's going to take on Louisville. And even though Louisville is probably the worst Power 5 team, they're going to get the win over Moorhead State. And now they have a nice chunk of land there in Kentucky. <clears throat> North Florida up next, heading down to the Sunshine State, going north, take on Jacksonville, an in-conference rivalry in the A-Sun. And Jacksonville's going to win, taking North Florida's land and expanding some into southern Florida. Next up, Drexel. They're going west, but they don't have any land. They're one of the teams that aren't on the map. So Miami, Ohio, we're just going to stay with the same direction. They're going to go west, take on Iupuai, who actually wins by one. According to Kim Palm, they're... Like, one of the worst teams in all of college basketball. But they're going to actually beat Miami, Ohio in a shocking upset. So let's see who's next. And it is actually Ayupuai, who just got done playing. They're going northwest. Can they pull another shocking upset against Butler? And they actually can. Another one-point win in a thriller of a game. Ayupuai somehow has taken, has taken two pieces of land in a row. New Mexico up next. Where will they go? They're going north, take on the behemoth, that is Utah Tech. They have a ton of land, but New Mexico is going to take it all. So now they have the most land in the United States, a huge chunk even of the west, all the way into the Midwest, Nebraska, and places, well, maybe not quite Nebraska, but definitely into Kansas right there. Sacred Heart up next, going back up to the northeast. They're going to play against the Yale Bulldogs. The Ivy League school is going to beat them pretty handily by a 32, though. So goodbye, go Sacred Heart. Next up, we have Holy Cross, another team from up there going northeast. Take on UMass Lowell. And UMass Lowell does pretty soundly beat the Crusaders. Take a pretty nice chunk of land there. And we'll see who's up next on the wheel. It's going to be Alabama. They're... Going northeast, that is going to take them against UAB, and they win by 20. And now they're starting to expand into more of that state. Hopefully don't, they don't touch my Lions, but honestly, Alabama's my favorite team anyway. So going down to Florida State, which way are they going to go? They already took Troy. Now they're going even farther west to try to take South Alabama, but it does not work. And our second Alabama team in a row conquering a, another school. This time it's Florida State that falls victim to the Jaguars. So the Seminoles are now gone, and we have Brown going up against Bryant. They're in parts a little bit of Massachusetts, and Brown is going to take the one-point victory to defeat the Bulldogs. So now we're Brown on the map now. 
And next up, we have Howard, a 16 seed in this year's tournament. They're going east to take on Morgan State, who has a bit of a weird border. And in overtime, Brown, or excuse me, Howard is going to beat Morgan State. So again, kind of a weird border. But next up, Arizona State going southwest, and that means it's going to be the rivalry, Arizona State and Arizona. But Arizona pretty handily takes care of business against the Sun Devils taking their land. So Arizona now controls a good bit of Arizona. And Cleveland State's up next. They've already attacked. And this time, they can't really go north, so they're going southwest to face against Toledo. But Toledo, I think I actually forgot to record that clip. But Toledo does win, taking out the Vikings. UC Santa Barbara next up. They're the Gauchos. That's going to be against USC. They're going... Couldn't really go south. They had to go southeast. They actually beat the Trojans 79-70. to I should have taken those islands. I'll try to do that in the next video. Um, but yeah, USC is gone. Texas A&M up next. And they're going to go west, take on Texas. So one big school go down here, and it's going to be A&M. They lose to the Longhorns, who have a pretty decent piece of Texas. As you can see, Louisville. Going east, they've already attacked in this video. They're going to try to do it again. They're the worst Power 5 conference, but somehow they keep pulling out these wins. Or the worst Power 5 school, not conference. But they keep pulling out these wins this time against Marshall, and they take some more land. Stephen F. Austin up next, going west more into Texas. And they got Baylor, a huge disadvantage for them, and they're going to lose by 15. So the Bears are starting to see some of the bigger Texas teams take some more land and expand into more of their home state. VMI up next, Akita is trying to gain land. They're going northeast. That's going to be against Virginia Tech. So that's a tough matchup for them, and they lose by 28. Lots of orange now in the state of Virginia. And I think I accidentally just took that from Virginia. I said it was Virginia Tech. That's actually Virginia. Excuse me. Oregon's going to beat Oregon State, and they lose. Oregon takes some more territory. Houston up next, one of the the best school. They're going up against Sam Houston State. Many thought they were the best this season, and Sam Houston State is actually going to beat them. I saw that in Daddy Cash's series. This happened too. Shockingly, Sam Houston State is going to knock out the best team, Houston. So now the number one team is actually Alabama. Sam Houston State with a massive win there, and they have a decent piece of land. Now Nebraska going south, take on Kansas State. The Wildcats do win by 13, though. Erasing the Cornhuskers off of the map. Kansas State, pretty good piece of land there. Now Vermont, one of the biggest teams in the Northeast. They can't go north. They're going to have to spin again, and they're going to actually go west. That is going to take them up. Well, they can't go west either, so they're going to have to spin it one last time. And this time they're going south. They can go south. That is against Albany. And Albany, really just not really any match for Vermont. They lose by... 12, and Vermont now very similar colors to Siena, but you can kind of see that outline there where Siena is. I'm sure that matchup will happen eventually. Davidson, they actually aren't on the map, though. They've already been eliminated, so just remove them. So the next team in action is going to be Gardner-Webb. Gardner-Webb in much the same area going west. They're going to attack USC Upstate, and they get the win by one, taking a small piece of land there. So next up on the wheel is Murray State. They've already had a couple of wins. Now they're going up against the Screaming Eagles of Southern Indiana, who they actually get shockingly beaten by by 24. Um, John Morant would not be happy. Um, I'm glad they did not have to go against UNA. But Southern Indiana taking out a very nice piece of land there. Now McNeese State going back to Texas, going southwest, take on Lamar, one of the worst Division I teams, and they beat them by 26, even though McNeese State is in the bottom, like, 30 of Division I teams as well. And there go the Cardinals. So McNeese State takes a nice piece of land. Minnesota, one of the worst Power 5 teams, going west, take on North Dakota State, the football powerhouse, who's actually going to win by a whole lot of points. Minnesota goes down, and there's a whole lot of green in this north region with North Dakota, North Dakota State, and Green Bay all there. You can see Asheville up next, a tournament team. They're going east to take on Radford. Drew Pember can probably carry them to this win, but haha, you thought wrong. It was actually Radford taking that win. You can see Asheville is 
erased. UCF up now. They'll probably win going northwest against another Atlantic Sun team, Stetson. But once again, wrong. Stetson does beat UCF 75-61 in a very, very well-played game by the Hatters. And now the Knights actually off the map. Stetson, some unexpected teams taking Florida, especially in the A-Sun. FGCU, Jacksonville, Stetson. Rutgers is up next. They're going east to face Monmouth. Should be an easy win for them. And this time it actually is. They win that soundly. And Monmouth is off of the map. Florida up next. Southwest. Okay, so they're actually going to take out Stetson. Not, <laughs> I mean, excuse me, they're going east. So, surely they'll take out Stetson, right? No, they won't. Stetson wins in overtime, and you love to see it. The Florida Gators are eliminated 75-70, to 70, and that is a huge win for Stetson. Now they control maybe even half of Florida. St. Francis, Pennsylvania up next. They're one of the worst D1 teams. They really don't have a shot against West Virginia, right? No, they don't. West Virginia wins 78-49, and St. Francis is eliminated. West Virginia with some kind of weird borders now. But, so they're kind of vulnerable to be attacked from a lot of different angles. Next up, and I don't think I actually recorded who was going here. It's Michigan. Western Michigan actually does beat them, though. And I'm sure the Michigan State fans who lost to Michigan earlier are not very happy. VCU going southeast now, going against Hampton. This should be an easy win for them. But it's actually not. Hampton winning by three. One of the worst D1 teams takes down a tournament team. And Hampton takes a whole lot of land there in Virginia. <clears throat> Next up on the wheel, North Carolina Central. They've been doing good in Natty Cash this series. They're going southwest to take on UNC, and they get their score doubled. It's not happening in this series. North Carolina Central is eliminated by the Tar Heels. Mississippi State up next, and they're going east to face Alabama again. Who will take this one? It's going to be Alabama by 41. A huge victory for the Crimson Tide, taking out another SEC foe. Next up, we have St. John's Repetino's new school going southwest. They're going to face off against Seton Hall, but Seton Hall is going to get the win by six, and very small piece of land, but it works for them. UC Irving going north against UC Santa Barbara has already taken over USC in this game, and they win again, 68-63. The Gal Show is getting another piece. Loyal and Marymount is not on the map, so we'll just have to spin again. Sorry if you're a loyal to Marymount fan. Memphis up next, and I was really hoping they did not have to play UNA, which they didn't. It's going to be Ole Miss, who they beat by 13, one of the worst SEC schools, and Ole Miss is eliminated. Memphis now has a very big piece of land. California up next, they are not one of the teams in the wheel. So for the last spin of the day, it's going to be Gardner-Webb going east against Wake Forest, and Gardner-Webb made it close once again, but Wake Forest is going to take the victory and they eliminate Gardner Webb and that's going to be all well no okay wait <laughs> there's a couple more teams Long Beach State going east but they're not on the map so Lindenwood is actually going to be the final team there I just kept the direction they're going to go up against SIU who wins by 40 taking all that land nice piece of red so actually that is going to be the end of the video real quick we'll see which teams have expanded the most as you can see, it's looking a lot different now. <clears throat> um, some big teams, New Mexico down here. You have Wyoming still up here. Uh, San Francisco with a big piece of land. You have um, North Dakota State. You have Vermont. Still Campbell. They did not attack any of Stetson down there. And Alcorn State even has a pretty big piece of land. But that's going to do it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.